You can start a virtual machine in VMware running without a GUI interface. This is sometimes called running the virtual machine headless. This is often a good idea if you want to run servers in the background or if you're running things like Docker containers where you don't really need to interact with the virtual machine except over SSH or some other non-GUI interface. To set this up, find out where the VM run program is on your computer. If you happen to be running VMware Fusion, for example, if you go to the application directory, and then find the VMware folder. Go to Contents and Library. Inside you'll find the VMware command line utilities. And VM Run is the utility that can start and stop machines in the background. In other words, start them up in headless mode. Once you know where the VM run utility is on your particular machine, then you can set up a script to start the virtual machine. For example, to start the virtual machine that I would like to run, I use the full path to the VM run utility. If you're running VMware Player, Workstation, or workstation player on Windows, your path is going to be different. It'll probably be something like C program files, VMware workstation, and then you'll need to find the utility from there. But whatever the full path is to the VM run utility, we're going to start with that. And then we use the keyword start, then the full path to the VMX file of the virtual machine. I'll show you what I mean by the VMX file. So I go into my virtual machines and then choose one of them as an example and go down into that directory. You'll see that the virtual machine is made up of a lot of different files. The file that contains all the information about the virtual machine itself is the VMX file. So if you open this up in text edit or if you're on Windows Notepad, you'll see inside that it essentially defines the virtual machine, explaining where all the disks are, how to set up all the virtual hardware, the network interfaces, and so on. It's this file that the VM run program needs in order to start or stop a virtual machine. Again, I put the full path to this file. On this Mac, it starts in the users directory under my documents where I keep my virtual machines, and this may vary. If you're on Windows, It'll probably be in your My Documents folder or Documents folder if you're on Windows 10 and then in your Virtual Machines directory under that. So locate your VMX file and put the full path there. And then finally, you'll need the keyword No GUI. This tells VMware that you want to start up the virtual machine headless. Now, if you just want to automatically start your virtual machines normally so that you can see and interact with the virtual machine through the console, then just Replace that with GUI. Make that script executable, and then when you run the script, the virtual machine will start up. Now, of course, you're not going to see anything in the foreground to let you know that the virtual machine is running. However, if you come over to your console and click on the virtual machine, even though nothing will appear in the window, you'll notice that the play button is actually the pause button because the virtual machine is running and you can pause it through the interface here by clicking on the pause button. We can also tell that our virtual machine is running by interacting with it. So in this case I'll just run a quick nmap scan that identifies an operating system on the IP address of that virtual machine. When the scan completes, we can see several open ports on this particular virtual machine, 
its MAC address and so on. And this is Windows 7. Actually, it's Windows Server 2008, but nmap identifies it as Windows 7. So we can see that the virtual machine has started. Now, to stop the virtual machine in this mode using a script, what you can do is, is write another shell script that uses the VMware command. So I've written one called stopms3.shell. And inside, you'll see that I start with the full path to the VM run program again, followed by the keyword stop, the full path to the VMX file that we spoke about earlier, and this time the keyword after the file name is the word soft. Now, when you shut down a virtual machine, you can force the shutdown, and if you want to do that, you would use the keyword hard here, but you don't want to do that in normal practice because any data that the virtual machine hasn't flushed out of its caches, also any files that haven't been saved, any registry changes that haven't been committed and so on are not going to be committed because you're basically pulling the power plug out of the virtual machine. So in normal practice, it's important to use the keyword soft here so that the virtual machine can go through its normal everyday shutdown sequence and complete any remaining tasks before it finally turns off.